Hi, and welcome back to the Bird Artist Cottage. I'm Tara Kate. If you are a returning viewer, then you know that I've been working on book illustrations for my illustration contract for a book on Oregon birds. This is a yellow rail that I'm just finishing up today. And today I have a sketchbook tour for you. This is my daily sketchbook. And if you followed me for a while, then you know that I draw every day and sketch birds for practice every day. So this is my sketchbook that goes from November to April. There are somewhere along 215 birds in this sketchbook. So lots and lots of birds to show you today, and I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. Before I get to that though, I want to invite you to join my online community. If you'd like to keep up with my new Skillshare class, which is in editing right now, it's going to be called Drawing Birds for Beginners. And if you join my online community, which is free, then you'll get updates on the class as well as small gifts and goodies for me and updates on the other things that I am doing, both uh, here in the studio and on Patreon. So if you'd like to join that, the link is in the description below. So I'll see you after we get done with the sketchbook tour. So you can see I started this journal on the 23rd of November 2021 and finished it 15 April 2022. This was the sketchbook for my daily sketching practice during that period of time. This is a Moleskine. It's from their Cahier collection, Plain Journals. It's a 120 page. Um, rather thin paper, uh, but it is a sewn journal, stitched binding, which is quite nice. So it's pretty sturdy, although as you can see, the cover is quite flexible. And the sticker on the front is a colored pencil drawing that I did, and this sticker is available in my Etsy shop. This is a common yellow throat surrounded by wildflowers. So, as I said, this was for my daily sketching practice, and some pages were done all on a single day, like this one, and then others were done over the course of several days, and some of them are labeled as to what species they are and where the bird was uh, photographed, and others are not. As you'll see, I kind of changed the way I did things as I went along. Common mina, that was a morning dove, crested duck, this was done on my birthday on 2021. Love the cast shadow on this Dunlin here. When I originally started doing this sketchbook, my intention was to really improve my drawing skills. I felt like I was a bit out of practice and I was getting ready to start my illustration project. This is all white-throated sparrow, foot, eye, bill, with the mouth open and from above, which is kind of an unusual perspective. I think this is when I started to feel like I was getting somewhere with my sketching practice. So this is on the 27th now, having been at it for like four or five days. Hammercop from Kenya, an open bill stork from Kenya, no, Zimbabwe. Lots of scribbly marks. I really like how this one turned out. And this is when I started to fall in love with drawing flying birds. Australian ibis. A friar bird with this bizarre funky bill and very naked heads. They're really odd looking birds. Fox sparrow. Three American kestrels all flying. Collared Pratt and Cole also flying. This is when I got my Tombow pins. You can see me trying out colors here on the upper right. Red-throated loon. I also added colored pencil to the, all of these, it looks like. Meadow pepet with this very strong cast shadow. And this adorable little kingfisher. Quite like how that turned out. A couple of, uh, those look like some kind of heron. I think this is called a widow bird with this incredibly long tail. I also quite like the way that one turned out. Uh, goose, you can see that I stopped labeling these with species at this point. 
That I think is a snowy egret, a gull of some kind. Really liked and did a lot of experimentation with drawing birds from different perspectives because a lot of people draw birds in profile and uh, that's boring. A little bit more with colored pencil and Tombow pens. That's a groove build Ani. We used to see these a lot when we lived in Panama. Some kind of gull. I think that's uh, some kind of a saddle something stork. I believe that's an African or Indian bird. Love these two little guys down here. Such dynamic poses of shorebirds. This is where I think things really started happening for me in terms of drawing in this sketchbook, where I filled whole pages with birds, did these full spreads with overlapping images. I just love these. This was so much fun to do. And it was doing these that I think was brought me the most satisfaction and the most pleasure and joy in drawing in this particular sketchbook. So birds from all over. This bird is the same bird photographed over and over. Wonderful uh, sh um, spoonbill. I think this is an African spoonbill. That I believe is a, I want to say royal ibis. It's an African ibis. Oh, I just love this. This is another page that I'm really very fond of. This is a white-breasted water hen from India. I didn't even know there was such a thing as a water hen when I found these photographs, but I was able to draw the bird in four different poses, standing here on the edge of some kind of a walkway with plants in the background, uh, preening its feathers, you can see its great big feet that it uses for walking over lily pads and other water vegetation. A close-up of its face, then walking away from the viewer, quite like that one, and then looking away. The bill foreshortening, I think, is not quite right there, but I, oh, I just love this page. This makes me feel very happy. And then a little group of ducks. I think these are all northern pintails. Just standing on a little group with head tucked. That one's in profile, but behind this one, facing away from the viewer. Quite like this one, too. I was starting to feel a lot more confident with my sketching by then. These shorebirds were drawn over the course of, it looks like, three days, the 16th through the 19th of December. I remember really struggling on the proportions on these birds, particularly that guy in the background. Trying to get this dynamic feeling of birds moving and doing things. I want to say this thing is called a saddle build stork because of this marking on its, on its bill. But we've got these fabulous cormorants, flying gull, and then this ibis is standing amongst hippos in Africa. This was really fun to draw. I had never drawn hippos before, so that was really fun. I think this is a chucker. I don't think this was a very successful drawing. You know, I think one of the things that you can take away from watching this and looking at uh, my process here is that here I am, let's see, I started on November the 23rd, so we're about a month into daily practice. And there are times when I feel like I'm making a lot of progress and feel like I've really grown, and then other times, not so much. And so I think, you know, part of what this shows is that progress is not linear, it's not consistent, that even over daily practice over a month, um, there can still be times when a drawing is just not very successful. A 
and then another page of nothing but flying birds. I love this spread. It was drawn over several days, as you can see the dates. Uh, 1229, 3130, 3131. I think these were drawn on the same day that this bird was. So varying species, all flying, different angles. It's just, this was so much fun for me. Scribbly, very expressive mark making. I love this. I love looking at the underside of this Inhinga, for example. It is just so fun to me. It's looking at these that I feel the greatest satisfaction in my sketchbook practice. Just think, wow, I drew all that, and it was fun, and I remember enjoying drawing it, and I look at it now and think, wow, I really like this. This brings me a lot of pleasure and joy, and if you're going to practice every day and work to get good at something, it's really nice to have a page where you think, wow, this was fun. I enjoyed doing this. And so something completely different. I had gotten some, oh, I don't even remember what these things are called. I would have to fish them out of a drawer to remember what the, the, um, the material is called, but it was in a sepia or a reddish um, crayon type, and this is a great horned owl. I drew this on January the 1st, 2022. Very expressive, very loose. I quite like how this turned out. As part of my sketchbook practice, I really did challenge myself to try to draw birds in really unusual poses. And that's what's happening with this um, ibis here is this bird is flapping its wings while standing, so it's stationary in terms of, of it's, not, it's not trying to fly, it's simply flapping its wings, as birds will do sometimes, particularly after they've been preening. And so you've got these wings in very odd positions relative to the body. And I really challenged myself to do drawings like this, to really push myself to figure out proportions and shapes and positions. And um, I think I really benefited very greatly from these kinds of drawings. And again, you see more flying birds on the rest of the page here, including, I think this is a kestrel. Kestrels tend to hover in place. It's called kiting, and that's what this bird is doing here. drew this little pied-billed grebe, or it may not be a pied-billed, it's a grebe of some sort. I drew this little grebe over a couple of days. Not sure that it's completely successful. I think there are things about it I do like. I like how the bill turned out. I think the eye's quite nice. But a lot of this cross-hatching down here in the water, uh, it doesn't really do anything for me. Then another page full of birds, a gull walking on ice. He's got his head really drawn down. Really like how that one turned out. Another flying bird, I like this one too. I think the head particularly looks quite nice on that one. A kingfisher, another gull, some bird that was photographed from below and behind. I like drawing bird butts, I cannot lie. Another flying raptor, another little bird. I think this is a Wilson's warbler, which we have here in Oregon. And I actually heard one of these yesterday when I was out walking the dog. Kingfisher looking straight at the viewer. This is some kind of a water bird with its wings outstretched, but I believe this bird was landing perhaps. Things, feet are kind of outstretched. Flying heron, oh, that's an American kestrel. All right, so a preening goose. Don't remember, I think this might have been an ornero with all this cast shadow, very loose, very expressive. A night heron eating a shrimp. 
And then down here at the bottom, a cattle egret with a cow back behind it. I don't think this was quite as successful. I don't think I got the value contrast quite right there to really be able to see the cattle egret as well as I would like. Here's another Ornero walking away from the viewer. I like that sort of feeling of motion as this bird is, is walking. This bird, I think, was photographed in India. I don't remember what kind of, um, it's a plover of some sort. I drew this woodpecker as I was taking a class on Domestica. It was taught by an illustrator named Philip Harris who works in ink. And I was considering this bird, I think this is a black back woodpecker. I was considering this for an ink drawing. And I do like the perspective and the angle. You know, we're seeing the underside of the bill. The photographer's obviously standing well below this bird as it's perched on the side of a branch or a tree. I made a note that this was too short, so I think I didn't get the proportions quite right. But I do like um, how this turned out, and I liked the feel of where this was going, but I didn't do anything with it afterwards. This is a meadow lark that was photographed in very strong light. And so we have these very strong cast shadows here. Very strong cast shadows, cast shadow behind the feet and nails, cast shadow on the perch. Most birds are photographed, or birds tend to be photographed on cloudy days. And so there's not a lot of cast shadow. And so it's sometimes quite nice for me artistically to find a bird that's photographed on a brighter day that does have some cast shadows because I think that gives me some opportunities to do things with value contrast. And um, I think it's really good practice. So I enjoyed sketching that one. Three ibis all flying. Some kind of a turn, I think. This is another one that I quite like. This bird is walking up an incline. Nice and loose, a little bit of foreshortening on the bill as the head is turned away from the viewer. A flying pelican. Don't recall what this is. Maybe a jackdaw? I don't think it's a crow. And some little passerine. This is another one of my favorite pages. These are all great blue herons. They're all flying in different directions, different wing positions, different leg positions, very scribbly, very loose. I love how this turned out. This was fun. I look at this particularly and think, ah. You can also see that I got very really loose with the eye and just let the eye be just a little, a little oval. And I quite like that. That was something that I started doing um, as in my process of drawing in this sketchbook, and I quite like how that looks. And look, I drew something besides a bird. Yes! I had never drawn a jackrabbit before, but I quite like how he turned out. I was thinking I was going to do some kind of a springtime-inspired illustration, and so I drew this little guy, but then I never really did anything else with it. Which is a shame because I think he turned out quite nice. I, I think he's very cute. And then down below him, this is a nuthatch. And I kind of got fixated on robins. And in my newer sketchbook, I'm drawing a lot of robins. And this was a robin study. And then penguins. It was the first time I had ever drawn penguins. Isn't that crazy? Of the very many birds that I have drawn. And I've drawn many birds. I had never drawn penguins before. Roadrunner. Some kind of a gull or turn. I think that's a mina. This is a northern flicker. I spent quite a while on this. And I'm not sure that it was very successful. It's okay, I guess. The proportions don't look quite right. A 
Here is another drawing that I really like. So this is a swan on the water, so swimming, with its wings outstretched. Probably has just finished preening its feathers. So it's doing this flapping that they do. The head is facing away from the viewer. This is a very simple little drawing, but I very, very much like how that turned out. Flying Anhinga, little walking quail that I used for another illustration that I did in Procreate. I think this is a ringed plover. That is some kind of an oriole. Love the scribbly marks. I was so much looser in my drawing over here, and I really like that. I was really trying to capture cross contour lines on this goose up here, and I don't think that turned out quite right. I like the pose. I think the head looks pretty good, but this body, not so much. I like the swan, though. I think that that's kind of cool. Nice strong outline. I don't usually use a lot of outlines there. Simple, very shape dominated. I like that. I was getting ready to draw Prairie Falcon for an illustration for the book. And so this is studies of prairie falcons in flight and then the head. Very fierce, strong flyers. And the date, you probably maybe can't see that, but it's the uh, 17th of February, 22. That's when I did these. Another one with lots of scribbly expressive marks. This is a puff bird from somewhere down in South America. Don't recall what species this is, but it was obviously shot from below. So we've got the perch between us and the bird, looking at the underside of the bill. I like this perspective very much. This is another of my favorite drawings of everything that's in this sketchbook. So this is a, I want to say Eurasian blackbird. It's a thrush. This bird was photographed in Russia on a very cold day. So it's very fluffed up. It's perched on this angled branch. We're looking at it from behind. It's looking away from the viewer. It's very fluffed up because it was cold that day. I just love this drawing. I like the way the head looks. I like all the scribbly markings, the fact that the toes are kind of foreshortened. Oh, love that. And then above it, a little nut hatch. Also pretty expressive, nice strong outline. This is the point at which I started to feel like my practice was getting a little stale. And so I was trying to do something different. I do not recall what species this is. You can see again, we've got a bird that's perched looking away from the viewer. And I decided to just do a full page spread just to give myself um, something different to work with and to play with um, giving it some background. So I remember working on this over several days because it took me quite a while to get all this shaded in. Then back to my accustomed way of drawing. That's a northern flicker. Again, we've got a bird that's perched looking away from the viewer for shortened bill. I think that one turned out kind of nice. Uh, same flicker, uh, different pose. That is a Kiskadee. I don't remember what that one is, and I don't remember what this one is either. For the record, I did keep a log. So I kept a log of everything. Oh, that's an Olive Sparrow. I do remember that. Northern Flicker, Northern Flicker, that bird right there. Olive Sparrow, so that was drawn on the 28th of February. So I did keep a log just not in here. This is a study for Very Thrush that's an illustration for the book. 
another flying raptor of some sort. If I, if I was short on time or energy, I often drew flying birds. Because if you're drawing a bird a day, sometimes, some days you just don't have it. And, uh, and so I gave myself permission to be loose and quick. And if I needed an easy bird to draw, I drew a flying bird. Okay, I love this page. So this is an African eagle species. It's called a battleur. I'm probably mispronouncing that. A study of the head, foot, flying bird, perched bird. So there's the head study. Had lots of raised feathers and I didn't finish drawing all those in. And then the foot, this bird was photographed from below, so it's perched on a branch up above the viewer's head, and we're looking up at these toes, these massive, massive feet. These are really big birds. Flying, and then this guy down here is another one of my favorites. Uh, this bird was photographed in very strong light, so we've got very strong value contrast. He's got his feathers raised on his head, so we've got a shadow cast by these feathers up here that the shadow is cast on his neck. We've got very dark between the two wings, very dark on the legs, and this cast shadow on the ground. Quite like that one. Tried to force myself not to erase, just to start sketching and and be very bold, be very bold in the way I sketched it. And I quite like how that turned out. So that was fun. So this is a page that I wish I had done differently. I love the water rail, this guy. I don't really love this open mouth Junko study on the same page. Really wish that wasn't there. But um, it is there. <laughs> I did scan this in and used it for another illustration. This was for a class I took on Domestica. I reviewed that class on my Patreon. So if you'd like to see all of the details on what I did with this after I scanned it in and I colored it. As you can see here on the screen, I'll tell you all the story about this uh, on my Patreon if you'd like to join us there. I don't think this drawing is very successful and I don't recall what it was I was trying to do. This was a turkey. It's a juvenile turkey. That's the kind of turkey that we have here in the United States. And they grow these bizarre waddles. And this is the beginning of a waddle. So it's growing straight up out of this bird's face like a big ugly ass wart. And uh, <laughs> I kind of got lost in the, in the waddles, I think. <laughs> so I didn't finish this drawing. And I don't think it's particularly successful, but it is kind of funny to see that big waddle sticking up out of this bird's face. Then another page of various species, some flying raptor, a gull that's scratching its face with its leg, as birds do. And uh, so that this is the, the pose here. This is, I think, an African snipe. It's walking toward the viewer. quite like the way that turned out. And then a flying, I want to say that's a dowager perhaps, flying away from the viewer. And then that is some kind of a plover, perhaps a um, killdeer. And then I started doing different things because I was taking uh, some classes on New Masters Academy and so I was studying figure ground relationship in a visual storytelling class and really learned a lot from this class. I should finish it. Uh, so I was taking some notes um, here on the bottom part of this page that is a goose. This is thumbnails for an illustration I did in Procreate. And there is the study of the singing bird, very loosely done. This turned into a full illustration that uh, I gave to my patrons as wallpaper this month, actually. So this illustration is available in full um, on Patreon. 
for download. Then more work on the visual storytelling class looking at dominant versus subordinate images and looking how with just circles you can communicate things like size, you can use size to communicate what is the focal or how something separates from its background and so on. I was feeling that my sketchbook practice was getting quite stale. Now we're getting close to the end of this sketchbook. And so I was trying to kind of return to some of the joy that I had in some of the earlier pages. And I quite like how this study turned out of the, of this is a red tail hawk, which has captured a snake. And uh, I really enjoy drawing this, trying to capture the feeling of the snakes, the tension in the snake's body as this hawk has grasped it and is about to eat it. These are more studies for the Wren illustration that I developed on Procreate and uh, that I mentioned earlier. You saw the thumbnails for it. So these are just studies that went into the Procreate illustration. This is a single species study I have gotten really obsessed with trying to draw in three dimensions and so I'm playing around with trying to see the shapes and the volumes a little bit better. Very loose study, strong light with a nice cast shadow, looking straight down on the head and a foot study. Love this page. I think I really wish that this reddish egret didn't overlap necessarily with this colored dove, but largely I think this is so fun. Really enjoyed this. I think this is a helmeted guinea fowl, and uh, as you can see it has this very large cask on the top of the head and a waddle. Very fun. I enjoy drawing these. This was fun. These are all least turns and just drawn in every position, flying away, uh, hovering as they do over water before they dive. There's a diving bird, in fact, diving into the water to catch fish. I think this, this sketch particularly is very successful. This feels very loose, very free. Love that one. Love that one a lot. I also quite like this guy standing here perched. He looks kind of jaunty, very loose. I like this. I like this page a lot. Something completely different. This is for um, another drawing on Procreate where I will do the color digitally. So I did all of the drawing and all the texture in graphite scan to this in and I'm now coloring it digitally. This was based on a Domestica class that I took and I don't remember the name of the teacher but I'll put it in the description below. So I really enjoyed it, uh, drawing this. This is a, a trillium that I photographed on one of our hikes. This is a night heron, and so I did a study, single species study, on this page. Bird with its mouth open, perched, I made the little note, red knees. I had no idea that they had red knees flying and then perched looking away. Very expressive. Big, funky, bulgy eye. They are nocturnal birds, as you would think they would be with a name like night heron. And this is the very last page in the sketchbook. These are all, this is another single species study. These are all boat billed herons. We see these in Panama when we go there. And so I've got this bird photographed from various uh, angles and positions. Big bulgy eye. This is a nocturnal heron. Have these fabulous, huge bills. And this guy with his mouth open, which I really like. Really like that. And trying to establish cross-contour lines, which is still a work in progress for me. 
but I really do like that one a lot. I think that was really fun. Very scribbly. I like this drawing a lot. And so that's it for this sketchbook. And if you have any questions, please do let me know in the comments below. That was a lot of birds. You know, when you're in the middle of a daily practice like that, it's not apparent, or at least it was not apparent to me, how many drawings I was doing. And then looking back over the whole thing in detail, I can really see so much effort and so much growth and change and increased confidence. It was really such a beneficial daily practice. And I have to say that Having recorded that video and now edited it, it has really rekindled my motivation for daily sketching. I actually had started a new sketchbook, a different kind of sketchbook. It's an old Pentalic sketchbook that I had lying around and I thought, well, I'll just pick this one up and finish filling it up, but I don't like it at all. And so I've actually gone back to another of the Moleskine sketchbooks for my daily practice and I feel so much better working in that sketchbook. As you can see I have loaded up another drawing for the next illustration for the book but before I go I would like to offer you a few suggestions for a daily sketchbook practice if you too want to start, start drawing birds every day. And there are a few things I'd like to suggest. One is make sure that you have a sketchbook that you feel comfortable working in and that's physically comfortable working in, as well as one that you don't feel precious about. That was one of the things about my choice of this particular sketchbook that you saw in the tour is that it's got thin paper, it's not super special, it didn't cost very much, it's good but not great. And I think that was very beneficial because then I did not feel precious toward it. It didn't bother me if I messed up a page. I don't recall that I tore out any pages in this particular sketchbook, but I have done that in the past. There's no shame in that. And I didn't feel precious about it at all. And I think that that's very helpful in terms of just learning and doing daily sketching. I also suggest that you track your streak. So it may be keeping a log, it may be using an app. Personally, I use the Streaks app. And I think building a streak can be very motivating in and of itself, and that also helps us to maintain daily practice. I would also suggest that you allow yourself to let your practice be very short time-wise so that you're not holding yourself to an impossibly high standard in terms of the amount of time you spend in your sketchbook on a daily basis. There are certainly some spreads that you saw that I executed over a whole day where I just spent the whole day sketching. But normally, I don't have that kind of time, and you probably don't either. So allowing yourself to say, okay, a quick sketch that only takes me five or 10 minutes is completely adequate. If you have more time, great, but that you're not holding yourself to a standard of practicing, say, an hour a day, which I think is very meritorious, but is not sustainable. And the other thing I'd like to suggest is that you keep your practice to yourself in the sense that you don't make it something that you post to Instagram day in and day out. Now, obviously, it's fine to share your sketchbook practice when and how you please. However, I think that there is a detrimental effect to producing at the pace of Instagram that really can get in the way of artistic growth. And so I suggest that you hold off and don't make it a daily thing that you're posting to social media because that takes the pressure off from you and allows you to have bad days. And you're going to have bad days. Certainly I had bad days. And you're going to have days where you just feel like what you have produced doesn't look very good. One of the things that really breaks my heart when I hear people do sketchbook tours like this is when they say things like, this didn't perform well on Instagram. That's really not relevant. It's not relevant in any way, truly, because it's not about how things perform on Instagram. If you want to grow as an artist, it's, did you learn something from it? 
Did it contribute to your growth? Did it keep you engaged with your practice? Did it get you through another day of practice? And if it did those things, then it is a successful drawing. You might have noticed that I didn't say at any time that I didn't like a drawing. I may say that I don't think a drawing is very successful because some of them aren't very successful. But even the ones that I think didn't turn out as well and weren't as successful, I learned things from those. If nothing else, I learned that practice is not linear and that there are going to be times and days when I just don't draw as well. I think we as artists can expect that we're going to have bad days when we're drawing. And that's perfectly natural. And so we shouldn't be too disturbed by that. So I hope that's helpful for you. Again, don't forget, um, if you're interested in learning more about drawing birds, to keep an eye out for my Skillshare class. And one of the ways to do that is to join my online community. The link is in the description below. If you'd like to see the process drawing for this bird that I've got sitting behind me, this is the buried thrush, which will be the next illustration I do for the book. You can see that in this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Bye now. Thank you.